Borsboom and uh, my name is Wouter Borsboom and I want to welcome everybody on uh, behalf of Build Up. I think we have a very interesting way to pay, uh, interesting presentation about retrofitting and I now want to give the word to uh, University of Nottingham. Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, David Tetlow uh, from the University of Nottingham. Uh, myself and Safa Rifat are going to be undertaking uh, presentations for you today. I'm going to share my desktop with you now. Okay, um, the first presentation we're going to do today uh, is uh, on behalf of Professor Rifat. So he's going to um, start. First of all, he'll introduce himself and uh, we'll get going. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Safa Rifat. I'm the head of the Department of Architecture and Built Environment, also the president of the World Society of Sustainable Energy Technologies at the University of Nottingham. So I'm going to give you a general uh, retrofit uh, on domestic building, very general presentation. So as you know, uh, UK and rest of Europe have a large housing stock, uh, all building which built for more, most of the very poor insulation, solid wall. For example, UK has 7 million houses with solid no, no insulation, leaking a lot of heat to the environment. If you look at the stock, we have a UK uh, uh, houses built in the 1930s and 60s. Uh, if you look at the performance, U values, these properties are very poor. For example, U values uh, 1.5 to 0.2, roof insulation, uh, U value 2.3 watt square meter K, poor glazing, uh, we talk about U value 5.6. So the whole performance uh, property are very poor, and we have to do something about them. Uh, Nottingham University uh, to uh, address this issue about both, not just uh, uh, old properties, but new uh, build, and we build seven properties on the university campus, and these are both low and zero carbon homes. Incorporate a range of technology and uh, sustainable technology, but we're really focusing on uh, a big way on retrofit. We have 120 companies involved in the project, and we have used these properties for a uh, showcase, uh, all occupied and monitored. Uh, we'll talk about this later. This slide showing an interesting slide, uh, showing a car, uh, Austin 7, uh, built in the 1930s, and also showing a, a house, 1930, uh, house, 1930s house. So you see that uh, many, many properties in the UK and the rest of Europe are uh, still uh, put insulation, while the car industry developed so fast, and you don't see much of these cars on the road. This is a 1930s house built on the campus, University of Nottingham campus. As you see this house, um, built to a standard of 1930s in terms of insulation, in terms of glazing. If you took, took that house and do a thermal imaging of the house, you see that a huge amount of heat escaping through the uh, roof, uh, through the chimneys, windows. And so the idea of this project is to take this house and the, the house and modify it to bring it to a level uh, five or six even to zero carbon. To do that, we have to do a whole range of changes on the property, from the fabric to glazing technologies. So this slide showing general environmental design, what you could do in terms of design of properties, and the many past design is a key here in many, many construction, in terms of natural ventilation, and in terms of solar architecture, building orientation, look at the flood, and storm the design aspect. Recycling and composting is very important. Try to minimize waste. Use of material uh, which use low energy to make them locally sourced. We also look at natural materials uh, rather than um, uh, cement and concrete. So we look at daylighting aspect. We look at thermal, thermal mass buildings, cr crucial, sun spaces, buffer zones, green roofs, uh, Look at way of uh, producing cooling using uh, evap cooling, uh, green technology for cooling technology, uh, courtyard cooling. Look at natural humidity control, and also we look at water uh, harvesting is uh, quite important. 
The other area we have, as you know, important is power generation, how we generate power from various sources, uh, solar, wind, biomass. So we look at PVs, wind, solar, hot water heating, fuel cell technology, energy storage, um, heating cooling, as I mentioned before, uh, hydrogen generation, geothermal energy is quite important. So the whole range of uh, energy generation storage uh, aspect we need to have to, to, to look at. Then come to technologies, sustainable technology, a whole, a whole range of technologies uh, available from look at high performance insulation, we look at uh, heat recovery technologies, lighting and shading devices, light pipes, light shelves, a whole range of, uh, range of glazing technology, high performance glazing, as I mentioned before, water saving devices, uh, look at heating, underflow heating, uh, efficient way of uh, get producing temperature, temperature and, uh, and the floor heating. Look at building automation and also look at uh, how we could coat here for uh, black bodies, white bodies in the building, uh, thermal curtains. And then we come to microgeneration CHP, a whole range of CHP systems and uh, biomass boilers and CHP. Uh, also, we look at how we uh, look at material in terms of low E materials. Uh, as I mentioned before, locally sourced material from stone and bricks, but also we look at how we make materials to, uh, with minimum energy uh, requirement. Look at all kind of insulation material, but focus on natural, uh, natural material. Uh, using waste is quite, quite important, recycled materials. And then we look at uh, orange of roof, uh, roof covering, uh, variety of clay materials, wood shingles, uh, uh, orange of uh, material for roofing. Timber construction, quite important. Natural paint coating, wood fiber boards. Uh, again, uh, whole range of natural flooring. So all that has to be taken into account. So when it comes to building, a, uh, building retrofit, there are two techniques for building retrofit. One is internal wall station, uh, and second one, the second, well, internal wall station, basically insulating using plasterboard and uh, insulation lining. The second one, external one station, which you could render and or, or cladding. The, if you look at the amount of energy saving uh, and impact of this uh, or solid one station is, is, is very large. For example, average property could estimate to create saving about 527 to 563 euro per year. So we save them cutting energy uh, by about 40 percent for a domestic uh, on fuel on a fuel bill. So. That's why the uh, um, UK government is pushing now hard to encourage us, also other European countries, to do more of uh, installation buildings. This slide is showing two properties, one before uh, external wall installation and one after. And you see the, the property has completely transformed, uh, looked like a new building. That's a project done by Kingspan. We have uh, currently uh, a, a, an EU-funded project Look, uh, called Holistic Energy, Efficient Retrofit of Residential Buildings. And that project is funded by EU. We have four-year project, 8.5 million euro, 17 par, uh, EU partners from 11 countries. I'm the responsible coordinating the project. So just briefly about, uh, about this, uh, my colleague Dave will talk about detail of the project. Some of the countries, UK, Greece, Italy, Portugal, Switzerland, um, most of the other EU countries are partner in this project. So the, the aim of the overall aim of the project is develop and demonstrate energy efficient technologies and holistic solution for retrofit, uh, retrofit of existing buildings and also monitoring of these buildings. This example of some technology could incorporate a building, for example, for daylighting to heat recovery, PIP, as I mentioned before, geothermal system. So you have many, many ideas, but we need to look at which technology could be could be integrated, and of course we have to look at the costing of integration. And when it comes to materials, there's a range, a range of materials available on the market, but really what we're looking at here for retrofit, we need to look at how we can make the material, uh, what well, amount of material used uh, as, as, as thin as possible to allow us to retrofit the building without having to alter the windows and uh, the whole kind of uh, frames and also the door frames or, and have many other impacts. So we need to look at uh, very thin insulation materials. So among these uh, uh, candidate uh, vacuum set panel and aerogels stands uh, very well. 
Aerogel is very, very uh, porous material, uh, made of nanomaterial, which is very, very thin, uh, one, to one over 3,000 human hair. The density is very low, and about 90% is porosity. So basically, um, it gives us a, lo a very low K value, 0 0.14 watt per MK. So that's why the advantage is you could use very thin material to insulate the building. Vacuum state panel also quite effective for insulation, and you see from slide uh, on the left hand side the uh, VIP vacuum state panel, and you see on the right hand side the other insulation material. The analysis indicate that uh, if you use mirror wool or PU form, we need, for so example, say 185 millimeter or 120 millimeter. We could get away with that by using 20 millimeter VIP, so you could cut that the thickness to 20 millimeter fused VIP. And VIP uh, is based on because of porosity and because the uh, core material used with large amount of air allow us to achieve this, this uh, as well as a vacuum, allow us to achieve this uh, low K value. So just a very simple example, if we say, say we take a K value of, a U value of say 0 0.1, uh, wall, wall station 0.1, that's what we call level 6 in UK. So for, to achieve that you need 429 millimeter thick wall, or could be if you use polystyrene and plaster, uh, uh, or could be 520 millimeter of the, of the uh, installation. So we could make that much thinner by using VIP if we cut it down to 260 millimeter. Uh, basically, uh, to do that also, we need to look at the cladding, how we clad the building to use something which looks like natural. So we work with a company called TrueStone. Uh, we develop coating material which mimic, looks like a stone or brick or slates. It's a coating material based on natural stone and Portland cement. Uh, the website there showing the, the company and, the, uh, and you see a variety of coating materials. We could, we could mimic bricks or uh, well, concrete or, or sorry, sorry, the stone or other materials. In terms of window technologies, we have a variety of uh, window technologies we could use, but we, at the university, we develop a new type of window using vacuum tubes to allow us to achieve a U-value of 0.34. Very, very high performance window. We also develop a whole range of daylighting technologies, for example, the solar band system developed by University of Nottingham in collaboration with Mondraff to allow us to bring daylighting and uh, ventilation to the shower room, bathroom, uh, toilets, whatever, and we could achieve building regs so provide 15 liters per second. In terms of heat pump system, we have been working on a, a DX, uh, the expansion heat pump system for retrofit. So you allow allows to retrofit existing water cylinder and the heating system with a, a heat pump system. So that allows us to heat water and with a COP4. So basically, you have a, you have a, a panel. The panel, for example, use air and solar as a heat source. So that will give us a much higher efficiency than conventional heat pumps. In terms of PV integration, we develop quite a unique technology to allow us to integrate um, a polyheat exchanger with a PV panel, PV roof. This is based on using a polyheat exchanger, a very simple uh, heat exchanger, uh, low cost. You put underneath the PV panel, allows to extract heat from the PV for heating, hot water heating, but also could be combined with heat pumps. Just a couple other, uh, other area which we could focus uh, here. We, we are uh, the host for the World Society of Sustainable Technology organization, uh, non nonprofit organization, aim to develop a strong partnership between university and industry. So this society uh, promotes uh, sustainable technology and also building retrofit and it's free membership and the website given there so anybody could join, could join the society. We also run three, three journals, uh, Renewed by Resources, Sustainable City and Society, and Low Carbon Technologies. And these um, three journals uh, cover all range of uh, cities of uh, retrofit. So I welcome you to submit papers to the journals. We just had our uh, 12 international set conference uh, in Hong Kong last month, where we had 400 papers uh, covering all aspects of retrofit and energy efficient systems. And the next conference we held in Switzerland. With that, I would uh, like to thank you for listening.